I don't know about everybody else, but I kept waiting for you to start the motor. Yeah. Before you. Let's talk about. We have to, obviously we have to talk about the car first because it's just so extraordinary. Give me some information. About, give me some specs. I've seen the. Uh, well, so far, I think most of us have seen the, the videos of, uh, of various uh, reporters and gone out and test drives with you. Braver, braver guys than me. Uh, tell me about the car. Give me some specifications. Price. Uh, well, the price is uh, just over $100,000. $100,000. Uh, how fast is it? Uh, 0 to 16, 3.9 seconds. 3.9 seconds? Yeah, it's actually faster than any uh, Ferrari currently in production or any Aston Martin. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, the 3.9 seconds understates the true acceleration because uh, there's no clutch engagement delays. So, ordinarily, in a gasoline car, they measure the 0 to 60 from when the wheels start moving, but the wheels don't start moving when you engage the clutch, which is 2 to 300 milliseconds. So, our 3.9 would be equivalent to about a 3.6 in a gasoline car. Now, I saw a video with Stovall where it looked like it ripped the fillings out of his mouth. <laughs> he said this was four, had four times. You, you so, since you don't need the uh, motor be on to get heating and heating. more torque than his static. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's an easy comparison, I suppose, but... Uh, now, here's the, here's the critical question. Distance. How far can you go on one charge? Um, it's a 220 uh, miles combined highway city range. Okay. Um, and the, the most, we've actually gotten as high as uh, 267 miles, just driving around the Bay Area. Um, so, the way to think about it is, if you take 220 miles, you can add about 10% uh, for, let no 10% for city versus highway. So it'd be more like, look like 200 versus 240. It'd be like 200 highway, 240 city. And then that 220 is with the air conditioning on. The air conditioning is about 10% lower. So if you are doing city driving with the air conditioning off, like somewhere in California, you're actually going to get more like 260 miles per hour. Now one thing that intrigued me when I first saw it was, I've tried to climb into various Lotuses and other cars, and you, you and I are about the same height. This seems to have more legroom. You actually fit in that thing. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, the thing I think that, that, that is, is uh, an improvement over the Elise is that the, the door sill is lowered two inches, so it's actually easier to get in and out of. And we redesigned the seat uh, to be wider and more comfortable um, for American rear end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and my rear end as well, actually. But yeah. Okay, now, the, here's the tough question. How long does it take to recharge it after going 220 miles? Uh, it's about a three and a half hour charge. Okay, um, so you don't have to literally go somewhere and stay overnight to recharge the thing for the next day. No, uh, and it, 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 the charge is built into the car, so all you need is an extension for it, um, which is different from the way previously, in previous electric cars, the charger was off board, so you, you'd have to find some place for the charger in order to recharge, but here we put the charger on the car, um, and we essentially re we, we get dual use out of the, the power electronics in the vehicle, um, and uh, so all you need is an extension cord. So you, you, you can and you can just go to a friend's house and plug in. Plug in your house. Yeah, just drive up the garage and plug in the wall and, and uh, get some juice. Um, you know, in, in some parts of the world they have a uh, like place where you can plug in your radiator, uh, or you can just plug in uh, you plug in the car. Uh, you know, like Minnesota, they got like things to keep your car warm. You just plug your car. In. Oh, and, and the thing is, you, you can. So since you don't need the uh, motor to be on to get heating and air conditioning, you can actually just leave your car with the air conditioning or heating running for like a, like a couple of hours and, or, or like go to lunch. I'm come back. Like this, that would really help. Yeah, you yeah. can come back and cost cool or warm or whatever. And uh, yeah, so it just keeps the internal temperature whatever you want to. Okay, I want to see you show hands out there. How many people would buy one of these things right now? <laughs> some, some people out there may have. But okay. All right. You want to tell them the bad news? If they wanted to buy one today, if they, sh if they handed you a check as you were walking on stage, how long would it take to get one of these things? Um, it's about a, a 12 to 14 month waiting list, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that waiting list is actually Ferrari, I have to say. So it's actually um, the, the rate at which we're signing up customers uh, is currently in excess of our production growth rate. So uh, our, our, our production rate is what is. Um, roughly 2,000 cars a year, uh, although we might be able to increase that a little bit. Uh, the intent of the Roadster was really uh, as a, kind of a demonstrator car uh, to, to, you know, to figure out the technology uh, and uh, initially because the, you know, when you, when you have new technology, unit cost is, is, is always high, whether it's cell phones, laptops, you know, even air travel used to be really expensive, cars, you know, gas cars used to be really expensive. 
This is really, um, you know, version one, um, and so we want to figure out how to get the, the core technology away. And then as we go to, to, to model two, which is a, uh, a four-door, five-passenger luxury sports sedan. Okay, now you, you read the rumors on the blogosphere. Uh, so there's a lot of rumors. The blogosphere. Yes, it's a very large place. place. It's a very large place. But one of the rumors that seems to be one of the memes that's taking fire these days is that you're going to stick to the roadster and you're never going to get to the sedan. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, the, the whole reason I founded Tesla was because uh, we want to drive forward the electric car revolution, and it would be I would consider it a failure to simply do it with the roadster. So when do we see the sedan? Do you think? Um, we're actually finalizing the design of the sedan right now. Um, so. I'm, we're leading the design of, of, of the sedan. I, I totally the design of the Roadster, and I'm leading the design of, of the sedan. I think people will be pretty excited about what they see. Um, it, we're trying to make this a good blend of, uh, of a beautiful design, but also great functionality. Um, so you don't want to go too far in the direction where you compromise the functionality uh, in, in the interest of having, you know, sort of a, a super sexy car. You don't want to go too far in the direction of functionality and have a few boxy hybrid. So we're trying to walk the right, the, the, the fine line of functionality uh, and aesthetic design, but I think I think we're I think we're there and we're, we're very close to, to finalizing that car. I think people are going to really love the sedan. Will you commit to a date, a rough date? Uh, our objections are for, for production starting in late 2010. Okay, how but, much? Uh, starting price fifty nine thousand. Fifty nine thousand dollars. How many of you would buy a fifty nine thousand dollar electric four door sedan? Yeah, me too. Well, well, particularly if you're, you know, it, it, it will cost you about five dollars to recharge two hundred twenty miles. Compared to one hundred and five dollars in my pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. In, in two years, I don't think the price of gas is going down. Uh, so you're really talking about something where, it, it, yeah, it's about about maybe five, five to five or six percent of what you'll get your gasoline car costs to drive. I mean, so that's just on on pure economics. If you were to say, and a good way to compare this would be to look at, say, the lease price, uh, you know, the operating lease. People's expectations are around 100,000 miles, but, but our uh, lab tests show closer to 150,000 miles. And then, and in the case of the roadster, we did not optimize top speed because that, that requires putting in oversized motor and oversized, you know, oversized. Everything ends up being oversized, and you have to have also these, uh, uh, you know, this, this, uh, spoilers on the car to get generate down yeah, force, yeah. Um, and those those actually re reduce the efficiency of the car. So we actually kept the, the speed at 125 miles an hour. Okay, and the special Elon Musk. Not, I don't okay. know. <laughs> the special Elon Musk version. How fast does that one go? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, in the, so the, so the, the motor, the nominal, ma ma the max RPM that's electronically limited to uh, in the Roadster is 14,000. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool having a 14,000 RPM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. S single single speed, 14,000 RPM, um, uh, 400 newton meters in full. Uh, so it's, it's pretty hard. But this car is going to have one of the best zero to 100 mile an hour times of any car on the planet because there's no gear change. Yeah. I mean, this this will just crush a Ferrari. I mean, it's, you know, I think I don't see why anyone would have like a Ferrari or a Maserati or anything like that. Yeah. It just seems okay. like wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm too white. Yeah. No, no marketing pitch. <laughs> I just I'm confused. Uh, you know, so you want a cool environment and have a slow car? I don't get it. <laughs> now, is it true that Tesla's going to own its own dealerships? Uh, yes. That's very old-fashioned. That's like Henry Ford, 1920. Do you really want to do that? Absolutely. Um, if you look at the strategy that Apple embarked upon with the, the Apple Store approach, I think that's a very smart strategy. It's a, it's a superior customer experience. People look forward to it at Apple Store. Well, even if you don't want to buy a Mac, just sort of order volumes and go in. Well, you're you going to put, right? you put the service shop out front, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right in the window, so you can walk by yeah. and watch, watch guys working on these things. Yeah, I wrote a little blog piece about a year ago on what I think the, the sort of perfect Tesla store should be. and the. It, it, it's a sort of combination of, of an Apple store, Starbucks, and a fried restaurant. And the reason I say the